What do Falcons do? We rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, the Golden Hard Doc, and a lifelong sports fan. Guys, we are almost back to a time where you can expect regular content from me almost all the time with the Falcons. We're going to have preseason games coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, training camp has resumed. It got off to without a hitch yesterday, and I, I couldn't be more excited. You also have the Olympics going on right now, so there is something to talk about from a sports standpoint, though it's not something that I think anybody watching my channel will care too much about. Uh, but, you know, it still gives us something to talk about. And, again, it just feels good to be getting back into the late summer, early fall portion for sports. That's my favorite time of year. College football is kicking back up. It's just great. But today I wanted to take a really brief moment to talk about uh, our new defensive coordinator and head coach uh, in Jimmy Lake and Raheem Morris, respectively, and talk about what I think they're going to do on a defensive standpoint or what we're going to really be looking to do from a defensive standpoint. Now, one of the things that they made abundantly clear in the draft by taking three defensive tackles and not address, not addressing the safety or corner position is that they believe in our secondary and they want to find the next Aaron Donald or find a cumulative Aaron Donald style defense where we can build around a central 3-4 base look and then kind of have guys on the outside. We didn't focus on edge rusher. We didn't focus on a lot of things that people have thought we needed for a while or thought we needed to beef up. So there is going to be a little bit of growing pains here. And the, one of the biggest problems we may run into is injury. We are hopeful, though, as Falcons fan, hopeful that with the additions of guys like Brandon Dorless, Ruka Rororo, and even Zion Logue, if he makes the final 53-man roster, that we can absorb potential losses that are inevitable on the defensive line and in the secondary often throughout the season. We definitely have a solid inside linebacker core, and our outside linebackers, more of our edge rusher guys, this is going to be where I think we may struggle just a little bit. As of right now, um, you know, you're looking at David Onyemata and Grady Jarrett kind of being either nose tackle and defensive end number one or two there. They could either one line up in either position, though certainly uh, Anya Mata makes more sense as a defensive nose tackle. Um, behind him on the on the depth chart is actually Ruka Rororo right now. I do look for Rook to make a big impact. We traded up to get him. I think he could end up playing on one edge of the base three portion of that so that we have all three of the guys that we look to be playmakers on the field at any given time, and it does potentially draw a double team from the interior coverages that we're going to be seeing for blocking schemes. Uh, and then you're also going to have guys, we're going to be leaning heavily on our outside linebackers uh, for edge rushing purposes. You're going to have guys like uh, Zach Harrison, who came big last year. He's technically lining up at defensive end right now, but again, he could definitely line up outside linebacker. He can do it standing. He can do it from a kneeled position. Uh, you have Arnold Epicady, who in last year's scheme under um, under Nielsen, which again, I, I'm very sad to lose Ryan Nielsen. It's not uncommon to get a complete coaching overhaul when when you get a new guy coming in, but we were the number one run defense last year, and that's something that we haven't seen before in the recent past, at least. So that was a nice change of pace. I think the defense definitely had the had something going with that last year. I am hopeful that they maintain top 12 status, even though Nielsen has gone on to be with the Jaguars. Jaguars are probably going to have a top five def uh, run defense in the league this year, just based on his track record. But we're going to be looking at a little bit different. We're going to be doing a 3-4 base. And again, you're going to have guys like Epicady. You're going to have Lorenzo Carter. Braylon Trice, who we took in the third round, is going to be in that mix somewhere. Uh, you're also going to have a few other guys. We ended up getting Smith Williams from Washington, I believe. Uh, and a few other guys that are probably not going to make the roster, they're going to be our main edge rushers, and we're going to have to have an aggregate solid performance from them, though I do believe we can get some interior pass rush with the three up front, and potentially four. I think we're going to mix it up periodically, but most of our looks should be disguised uh, as three, four looks, and then we'll kind of branch out from there. But it would not surprise me at all to see us go to a 4-3 with the personnel that we have from time to time. And the biggest reason I think of that is think about our defensive line here. You have David Onyemata, Grady Jarrett, you have Ruka Roro, you have Brandon Dorless. Even Taquan Graham can come in and be a rotational piece and is a competent rotational piece most of the time. 
You've got five guys there that all can play a big role, but if you're going with a base 3-4, only three of them are on the field at any given time. And that doesn't even include if you're talking about Zach Harrison being on the defensive end and kind of being more of a, you know, get down really low on the, you know, front three, front four of the defensive line as well. So it's not even including him. We're, we're counting him to be more of an outside linebacker, edge rusher type figure. But you've got a few guys that are really, really good, and we should have a solid, solid defensive interior. If guys are going to run on us, it should have to be on the outside zones or just way, way, way outside. Um, I don't think we're going to have a lot of interior uh, rushes. I don't think we're going to have a lot of tush pushes against us that are going to go really well for a team. So I think they're going to have to run on more of an outside zone. I think inside zones are going to be out of the picture with this grouping. Uh, with our interior line, and this also goes with interior linebackers. You've got Caden Ellis, who's still on another year. Con He's got two years left, but only one year guaranteed. Troy Anderson, who was coming alive before going out with the injury last year, second rounder from a couple of years ago, spent a lot of draft capital on him, somebody that we hope takes a step forward. But Nate Lamon, to me, should be the starter over Troy Anderson until proven otherwise. Nate Lamon, undrafted free agent last year, or under, uh, you know, he's been on our team for a couple of years now. He got he was hurt coming out of Colorado. Uh, but then came alive last year, was a breath of fresh air. And then in the fifth round, we got J.D. Bertrand, who's probably going to be a practice squad guy, but also should be that fourth defensive interior lineman and may work his way into the rotation from time to time, especially if in if the injury bug starts a calling, because then we're going to have trouble for sure there with our middle linebacker position. Um, but again, I like the overall core of these guys, and I think that's where we're focusing is on the linebackers and on the defensive interior. Now, here's the problem with this. We have a solid top 15 corner in the league in A.J. Terrell. We need to get a deal done with him to keep him on the roster unless we think by some miracle we'll find a free agent next year that we can afford or that we can find somebody in next year's draft that could be a almost instantaneous replacement. That would be incredibly difficult. A.J. Terrell was not good in his first year. It took till his second year to really be good. Third year was a little bit of a wash, and fourth year, again, I would say it was a very solid performance. Need to, need to, need to re-sign him. He will be a key part of our defense going forward. But you've got Clark Phillips III, who came alive as a fourth-rounder last year, a guy that a lot of people thought would be maybe a nickel corner, but he doesn't play that role very well. He's a little undersized, but plays incredible on the outside. Is a great run, uh, run stuffing corner. So he came alive and should be an amazing uh, corner too. And I'm glad to see on the initial depth chart that he is listed as the left side cornerback over uh, some other guys, in particular over guys. Um, like Kevin King, Andy Alford, and Mike Hughes, some of these other guys that I think are okay, but again, not great. Um, and then you also have at safety, the ageless, the amazing, the all-pro, the best safety in the league, arguably Jesse Bates III, who in the first game last year had three interceptions against Carolina. Now, obviously Carolina was not very good last year, but he made impact play after impact play after impact play throughout the course of the season. Jesse Bates will anchor along with A.J. Terrell, the secondary. We're going to be hurting bad, 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 bad if he goes down with injury or if, or if A.J. goes down, though. I do believe that the other safety in there, strong safety, DeMarco Helms, he was a seventh rounder. I have huge faith in this guy. He was great for the second half of the year. He didn't see the field in the first half. Second half, he came alive. And my God, Richie Grant, you've got nothing on him. You got to step up your game, man, if you want to end up getting a second contract with this team. Because as far as I'm concerned, Richie Grant, if he doesn't show something this year, he is gone. He's not going to be on the team anymore. It's going to be kind of a wash of a second round pick. He provided us some useful years, but not a lot. You've got Mike Hughes, also same, uh, you know, UCF legend Mike Hughes, same school. I don't like Mike Hughes. I think he needs to be a bench player, former first round uh, talent, not ever living up to that. D. Alford needs to be the nickel corner. And again, on the initial depth chart, that's where it looks like D. Alford is placed. So I love the initial look for the defense. I love the initial starters, projected starters. I think we're going to have some trouble, though, particularly in the secondary, if the injury bug starts to call him. 
I don't think that guys like Antonio Hamilton Sr., I don't think Richie Grant, Micah Abernathy, whoever the heck that is, Kevin King kind of washed up and injury prone, Mike Hughes, no good, please get rid of him tomorrow, um, D. Alford, who I don't think can play solid as an outside corner, but is a great nickel. We just don't have a lot of depth. It would have been nice to see them attack the depth a little bit more in free agency or potentially with some of these later picks in the draft. I think it was a little bit deeper mid-round corner market, and we didn't really attack that very well. I'm hopeful, very hopeful, that this team can stay healthy. And if we stay healthy, we should be a top 15 or top 10 at best defense. If... The injury bug starts a calling, and we lose guys like Grady. And again, Grady is not guaranteed to be back at the beginning of the year. He had a major injury in the middle of the season and may not be healthy to start the year. But if we are struggling with injuries, this could be another rough year on defense. It could show some lapses. And again, I don't think this is going to necessarily be the nail in the coffin for Raheem Morris being you know his first year as our head coach. But I do think it could set the tone and already start – rumors and get the seat getting a little bit warmer at the defense as a defensive minded coach does not perform well. Now he made a he made an incredible adjustment with the Los Angeles Rams who really only had Aaron Donald as a name last year and turned into a top twelve defense last year overall. I think he can do the same thing with these guys. I think Jimmy Lake, particularly Focusing on the secondary can do the same thing, making the secondary be very good. Raheem Morris is very good with secondary players. At times, he was even coaching the wide receivers in the past because he knew defensive scheming for the secondary so well and was trying to teach wide receivers what to do to break those coverages and break those schemes. So I have a lot of faith in this coaching scheme. Again, I have very high hopes for the Falcons this year. I am a Falcons truther. I think we were absolutely screwed last year by bad quarterback play and by bad coaching and failure to utilize the players that we needed to in the red zone. I'm hopeful, and that makes me incredibly nervous going into this season, but I haven't had this much hope in a while. I had a lot of hope last year, and it got dashed by week nine. This year, I just have a lot of hope that we were going to be competitive. I think if we can make it with a plus 500 record through the first 11 games of the season, or first 10, I think we have a bye week at week 12. So if we can make it through the first 11 games of the season with a winning record, then I think the final six are much easier. And I think we come out with at least a double-digit season for wins, possibly being the three or two seed. Best case scenario, obviously, the one seed, because I do think we have the easiest schedule. 14-3 and is not outside of the realm of possibility, but it is going to be incredibly difficult to achieve. 11-6 and is what I do think this team can do. I think even if the defense shows up more than I'm giving them credit for already, I think that 14-3 and looks a lot better as an actual target here. Uh, But the defense is good but not great. I think that 11-12 to win season is... It's going to be more of a target. I think the offense is going to be the offense. We have obviously spent a ton of draft capital on them in the recent past, really in the last five or six years, taking offensive linemen, taking you know tr- uh, skilled positions like Pitts and London, Bijan, and then obviously with Michael Penix, who will not see the field if everything goes well for the next two years. But guys, let me know what you think about the Falcons' defense down below. I don't have a lot more to talk about before we get to the season. I cannot wait for preseason. I know all of you are excited for it as well. The NFL is almost back. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. And as always, rise up.